G'day guys, I've got an integration question that one of you has given me from an A-level pure mathematics exam. Now we're asked to show that the volume of rotation of this shaded area here is equal to pi times h squared on 2 plus h. Now to start this question guys, what we're going to do is we're going to acknowledge that the best way to find the volume of rotation using integration is through the use of this formula here. We've got v is going to be equal to pi times the integral or the definite integral from a to b of the function f of x squared dx. Cool. So here we have, guys, our f of x is going to be equal to, we've got f of x is going to be equal to x squared minus 1. And our boundaries, well, in terms of x, our boundaries are quite difficult to determine. So what we can do, guys, is I'm going to basically rearrange this so I'm going to use f of y. So what I'm going to do is rather than have f of x in here, I'm going to replace this with f of y and I'm going to replace this with obviously dy. So what I can do from that guys is I'm going to rearrange this equation here so I've got the function in terms of y. So what I'm going to get is I'm going to get the square root of y plus 1 now, if you guys don't understand how I got this, I've basically rearranged this formula here. So if you still don't understand, basically you probably shouldn't be doing this subject, but I would have a look at a few more basic algebra videos. So what I can do now, guys, is because I have my function in terms of y, I know what my boundaries of my integral are going to be. I know that the first one is going to be 0, because it's going to be y equals 0 here, and my second boundary is going to be h, or here. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I can substitute this new function into my formula. So I'm going to have the volume of rotation is going to be equal to pi times the integral from 0 to h of the square root of y plus 1 squared dy. Great. So hopefully you guys are aware as well that the square root and this squared will end up cancelling each other out. So what we will get is we're going to have this is going to be equal to pi times the integral from 0 to h of y plus 1 dy. Cool. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to take the integral of this y plus 1. So hopefully you guys are aware of how that would work. We have this is going to be equal to, we'll keep the pi out the front, times the integral. So the integral of just y is going to be y to the power of 2 on 2. So I raise the power by 1, and then I'm going to divide it by what this new power is. So I can make sure when I, if I was to differentiate it, those 2s would cancel each other out. Now, when you're integrating this 1 here, is the same as, you're going to say that that's going to be the same as y to the 0 is equal to 1. So when we raise to the power by 1, this is going to be equal to just plus y to the power of 1 or y. Now this is going to be evaluated between 0 and h. So to this, well then let's work it out from h so we can sub in h for where y is and we have pi times h squared on 2 plus h, and then we would minus put the 0 in, it would be 0 squared on 2, which is 0 plus 0, so there is no um, nothing to minus from this upper bound. And what we can do then, guys, is we can just check that, oh, hang on, we already have the volume formula, but we must make sure that we write on the end of it, units cubed. So we are well aware that it is a volume equation. So there is our formula. So what we've done here, guys, is we've appreciated that to figure out the boundaries on the um, using dx rather than dy, or the function in terms of x, is a little bit more tricky because we're going to have to, we've got zero still for x, but then we're going to have to figure out where these two meet. And then we're going to have to figure out what this boundary is here. It makes it all a bit of a pain in the ass. What you can actually do is instead go, well, I know that my upper boundary is going to be h, and I know my lower boundary will be 0. 
so I can integrate using the function in terms of y a hell of a lot easier. Like this one here is a hell of a lot easier than the other way. So what we can do then is we just integrate it with respect to dy. And you'll find that without too much effort, the uh, resulting formula that we were looking for pops straight out. That's why I guess this question is only worth three marks. So I hope the video helped you guys. If it did, give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. You can also, if you have any problems with the exams that you're trying or the questions that you're trying to do for your schoolwork, always leave them in the comments section below. I'm always happy to try and like find some new video ideas. But until next time, guys, just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. But most of all, make sure you keep enjoying your maths. So again, I hope the video helped and I will see you again soon.